Welcome to this tutorial which will show you where you can find a range of built-in tools to support learning which are available on the iPad at no extra cost. Most of these tools can be found in the section Accessibility and I will demonstrate where you can find accessibility and give a brief overview of what is available and how it might help. The good news is that accessibility is also available on an iPhone so if you don't have an iPad, you can still use these tools on an iPhone. Depending on the age and model of your iPad will depend on the different tools you can get access to. Newer iPads will have a more updated operating system. By this I mean the software that allows your iPad to work, to start up, run apps, connect to the Wi-Fi and other tasks. The operating system on an iPad is known as OS. The iPad I am using to demonstrate has the latest operating system, or OS, which is OS 14, although this may well be updated over time. So the first thing I would like to do is to show you where you can find your iPad OS version. To get started, you need to find the settings icon on the iPad's desktop, which looks similar to this. If you can't find it, there's an easy way to find apps on an iPad using something called Spotlight Search. All you need to do is to drag your finger down on the iPad screen and this will reveal the search box. So I just get my finger and I drag it down and now you can see there's a search box. So now I want to type in settings. And there it is. When you're in settings, the next stage is to tap on general, which is just here on the left side. When you tap general, a new window appears on the right and at the very top is about. So now we scroll down to the software version. So software version is the second one in the list. And you can see that my version is currently 14. But remember, this will change with new updates. Incidentally, if I go back one level, remember to check that your iPad or iPhone has a recent update by checking software update. To finish, Close settings by pressing the home button or by swiping from the bottom of the screen if your iPad doesn't have a home button. We'll now look at accessibility. Accessibility is also located in settings. So let's go through the process of finding and opening settings as we did before. Remember, if you can't see settings on your desktop, you can do a spotlight search. Or, if you look in your dock at the bottom of your iPad, just here, it will most likely be there, as this is where the recently apps are, uh, are stored. So this time, scroll down the left panel or window until you see Accessibility, a blue icon with a white circle. The first thing to notice when you are in Accessibility is that the heading at the top Accessibility features help you to customise your iPad for individual needs. So, if you or someone you know has an additional support need, then accessibility is a great place to start without needing to purchase additional apps. As I move the panel up and down, you can see that accessibility is divided into four categories. Vision, physical and motor, hearing and general. So let's have a quick glance and see what is in each category. Vision. In Vision, there are seven subcategories. VoiceOver, which can help people who have a visual impairment or are blind by speaking aloud items that are on the screen, sometimes known as a screen reader. Zoom. Zoom can help people who have difficulty seeing things on the screen. With Zoom, you can magnify all the screen or just part of it. Magnifier. Magnifier uses the iPad's or iPhone's camera to magnify your surroundings or documents. 
such as newspapers and magazine articles, or even a menu if you were in a restaurant and the text was too small for you to read. Display and text size. This section lets you make more detailed visual enhancements. Rather than just magnifying the whole screen, which Zoom does, you can select bold text to enhance text on menu items, making it more defined and easier to see. Or you can increase the size of the text to make things easier to read on the iPad. Motion. In order to make things on an iPad look crisp and detailed, almost with depth, like three-dimensional, the iPad uses something called parallax, which can be disorientating and distracting for some people. Turning off motion will make things look flatter on the iPad. Spoken content. This is a great section for supporting literacy, such as reading and writing, as the iPad can read aloud web pages, documents, as well as reading words and sentences as you type but we will come back to this in greater depth in another tutorial. Audio descriptions. Audio descriptions are used to explain the actions that are happening on a film or video, although this will depend if they have been included in the film. Physical and motor. This section can help those who experience problems with fine motor skills when using an iPad. For example, if you find it difficult to hold and touch an icon on the iPad, then touch can help to customise the way the iPad responds to touches, such as taps, swipes and other interactions. Switch control can help people use the iPad who are using an external device by pressing a button or a switch to make something happen. With voice control, you can control your iPad with your voice, but you will need to learn a lot of commands to master this. Hearing. If you wear a Bluetooth hearing aid, this section can help you to connect your hearing aid to an iPad, allowing you to hear things such as films and listening to radio on the iPad. General. There are some really useful tools here, such as guided access to keep learners on task and Siri so you can ask a talking assistant questions or use it to type text, which we will explore later. Before I finish this tutorial, I will show you how to set up the accessibility shortcut. This gives quick access to the tools in accessibility by triple clicking the home button. So here you can see I have some items ticked. These could be tools that I need to help access the iPad with greater ease. I can also move them in order of preference. Now, if I press the home button to close accessibility, and now triple click the home button, you see a menu appears with the items I have chosen. If I want to change the color contrast on my iPad, you can now just tap on the menu and you can see how quick this appears. And then, Triple click again to turn it off. This concludes the introductory tutorial on the iPad. Thank you.